The whole week we are here with 200 of our comrades to discuss world perspectives as our guide to action. From 17 up to 65 years old, all with the same determination to uh, fight this rotten system. With activists from 22 different countries representing multiple layers of the working class. From the US, Australia, Brazil, Poland, Mexico, Israel, Palestine, and many more. And that is also why we will be translating. That is why we will be translating this whole meeting. And ask every speaker to pause after each sentence. We, the ISA, are a fighting organization organizing and intervening in strikes, demonstrations, and walkouts. But we always combine those actions with a strategy on how to win. Everywhere we are active, crisis is a permanent feature. Um, no one is able to escape. With multiple crises enforcing each other, Look at the deadly investments in the carbon industry after the war in Ukraine broke out. With the pandemic intensifying violence on women. Workers who were shown to be essential during the pandemic now being the victims of the cost of living crisis. But the working class is ready to fight back. And so are we. We expect over hundreds of people on jo uh, to, to join this meeting on Zoom tonight. To hear about the ISA being a part of the new wave of class struggle everywhere in the world. But how can we take power? That's the main question we want to answer in this meeting tonight. This rally is organized by International Socialist Alternative. My comrade Arne asked the question, how can we win? We think the answer is through the organization and mobilization of the working class and all oppressed people. Women, LGBTQI plus and people of color around the world. The fight pack is international. Last November at COP26, 300 international socialist alternative activists acted as a maypole for thousands of the most radicalized youth on a march of 100,000 strong.
Comrades in this room just weeks ago led hundreds of thousands to the streets in an organized fight back against the overturning of Roe versus Wade in the US. Here in Belgium, Rosa have galvanized thousands to the streets in the fight back against gender-based violence. But struggle alone is not enough. We must put forward a political socialist alternative. Marx and Engels wrote that capitalism by necessity exploits the working class. It marginalizes and systematically oppresses sections of our society. It now creates fundamental barriers to human progress. The solution to problems outlined by Arna from the capitalist crisis to inter-imperialist wars to oppression <laughs> is to abolish the rule of capital. It's for... It's for the working class to take democratic ownership of control of the wealth of this world. And so we urge you, if you haven't, to join International Socialist Alternative in this struggle against capitalist exploitation and oppression. It must also be understood that there are opponents to our struggle. There is a rise in anti-working class, racist, sexist, homophobic and transphobic political forces. Reactionaries in power like Bolsonaro. From Latin America to North America to Europe and beyond, the threat posed by the growth of these forces is a major challenge of our time. And this brings us to our first speaker. Julia Chavez is from the front lines of the struggles against this threat. She's a leading member of LSR, a revolutionary socialist organization, part of the ISA in Brazil. Um, thanks, Rocha, and good evening and afternoon. Uh, to all comrades all over the world who are like here with us today. As Russia said, I'm Julia Chavez from Liberty, Socialism and Revolution, the Brazilian section of ISA. And I'm really glad we have the opportunity to talk with people from the most diverse countries and backgrounds. Unfortunately, the thing that unites us here today is the challenges we face in a capitalist exploitive world. Uh, 
but fortunately, uh, is by sharing our experiences that we can arm ourselves to fight such system and finally overcome it. In Brazil, the capitalist contradictions were responsible for the rise of Bolsonaro and Bolsonarism. As we have already discussed during this whole week at the ISA Cater School, Since the beginning of, of his far-right presidential campaign, we are living under a constant threat. With the death of almost 700 um, people, 1,000 people during the pandemic. Among the numbers of the main deaths and also of the people who struggled the most during the pandemic, we have the workers, women, black and indigenous people. <laughs> Bolsonaro managed to put Brazil, the top one exporter of food commodities back on the hunger map. <laughs> Data shows that food insecurity affects 52% of the Brazilian households. <laughs> to keep the agribusiness power, the government promotes budget cuts, dismantling environmental protection policies, and weakening environmental agencies. <laughs> Sadly, the murder of indigenous Bruno Pereira and journalist Don Phillips uh, weren't exceptions in Brazilian indigenous persecution. <laughs> Bolsonaro encourages armed attacks against traditional indigenous, indigenous communities and the usurpation of their territory. For their lifestyle doesn't fit capitalism and actually defies agribusiness logic by protecting nature. <laughs> We are also facing an enormous increase in the prices of fuel, electricity, <laughs> cooking gas, food, and other uh, basic products. <laughs> And the perspectives are that these conditions will only get worse as an effect of the global economic crisis that nears us. <laughs> Meanwhile, since March 2020, when the pandemic began, the country has gained 10 new billionaires. <laughs> The, the top 20 of them in the country uh, have most wealth than 60% of our population. <laughs> Bolsonaro is an explicit expression of the evil within capitalism. But even with the impeachment attempts, he hides approval rate and the several protests against him. 
The ruling class. Uh, the ruling class and traditional parties, parties weren't interested in holding this bomb that is Brazilian conjuncture. Even leftist, leftist leaderships played the role of a break to the struggles. They want to restore order. That's what is being shown by Lula from PT, uh, the Workers' Party. Throughout the 13 years PT was in presidency, it steadily decreased its left character. Now Lula has a right-wing former governor of Sao Paulo as his vice. The sector supporting this late uh, didn't participate in most of the mobilizations from the Black movement or Bolsonaro out protests. We, on the contrary, know that struggles are fundamental to guarantee that the elections are respected, as we could see in examples of our comrade countries in Latin America. We cannot underestimate Bolsonaro and his gang. They continue to make coup threats. He won't participate in the electoral process in a democratic and peaceful way. He'll use the power, position, and money he has to continue financing, financing killing, misery, political persecution, and the spread of fake news. And even though uh, we believe Lula will probably win the next elections, the role of the socialists in these elections is to say in loud and clear that we can't have Bolsonaro again. But we can't rely our hopes in institutional politics. For we know they are made by the ruling class to supply its needs and keep its power. We know that with the coup attempts that await us, and with the impossibility of solving such rooted problems institutionally, we need a revolutionary left that trusts people's potential to change the course of the conjuncture, to change the course of their own uh, story. After all, only struggles can change lives, or as we say in Portuguese, só a luta muda a vida. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Julia, for this inspiring way to start the ISA rally. Over 300 people are right now following this meeting online on TikTok, YouTube, Zoom, and other platforms. So let's continue and go from the south to the north of America. The defeat of Trump in the elections was not the end of Trumpism. That's what we saw with the US Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. It's another step in the march of the reactionary right-wing offensive in the US. But the US is also the epicenter of the rebuilding of the socialist labor movement. Kaylin Nicholson is a leading member of the Socialist Alternative in Seattle. Socialist Alternative brought hundreds and thousands on the streets against this attack. And they will explain us now how to win. When the Supreme Court ruled that abortion was no longer protected by the US Constitution, they didn't just undermine the basic freedom, safety, and economic independence of millions of women in the United States. They sent a clear message that was heard around the world. That even in the so-called land of the free, all of the rights, all of the protections, all of the social progress that past generations fought so hard to win can be taken away in an instant. And if anger alone were enough to stop them from dragging us back towards the dark ages, then we would not be in this situation today. Because the outpouring of rage and grief expressed by hundreds of thousands of primarily young women who poured out into the streets after this decision was made was unlike anything I have ever experienced. And if the democratic will of the people were enough, we also wouldn't be here because twice as many people support federal abortion protection as oppose it in the United States. But here we are. And it's absolutely clear that the Supreme Court intends to drag us even further back. They are already preparing further attacks on women, LGBTQ rights, and workers' rights. In order to be effective, 
Our anger and our will have to be channeled into a plan, a collective program, and a strategy to win. And that's what we've been doing in Socialist Alternative, the US section of ISA. Unlike the Democrats who did absolutely nothing to stop this attack, despite controlling Congress and the presidency, and unlike the mainstream women's organizations who have been preparing for a post-Roe world for years already, We refused to accept this attack lying down. We launched a petition demanding that federal abortion clinics be immediately opened on federal land in all states that passed abortion bans. And we used our one socialist elected office, Shama Sawant's seat on the Seattle City Council, to put forward model legislation. <laughs> that not only invites women and pregnant people to come to our city for safe, free abortion. but says, if you face legal persecution in your home state as a result of giving, receiving, or aiding in an abortion, you can come here and be safe. And I am so incredibly proud to be able to announce tonight that yesterday we forced the Seattle City Council to vote unanimously to pass our legislation, making Seattle the first abortion sanctuary city in the United States. And while of course, this victory is a small drop in the bucket compared to the full scale of what's left to win. It's nonetheless an extremely important example for young women in the United States and across the world That even in the most demoralizing circumstances, with the right ideas, socialist ideas, and a strategy to win, we can stand up, we can fight back, and we can win. Solidarity. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Kaylin, for showing exactly what ISA can do.
As demonstrated by Kaylin, socialist feminist struggle is a crucial part of international socialist alternatives identity. We do work all around the world and Belgium is a prime example. Frida Verlea is a Rosa activist from Bruges and a member of Left Socialist uh, Party ISA in Belgium. Rosa needs no introduction in Belgium uh, for feminist fighters. Um, they have a proud uh, record of struggle over the years across a broad range of issues. From issues of gender-based violence to LGBTQI plus issues to supporting workers on strike. And so it's really exciting to hear from one of their key activists. Especially LGBTQI plus youth are faced with huge oppression. At home, they face family members who don't accept them. At school, they develop bladder issues by not being able to use a neutral bathroom. And in the streets, just being LGBTQIA plus can still put you at risk of deadly violence. In Ireland, two gay men were murdered only 24 hours apart from each other this April. At the same time, pride marches are commercialized, sponsored by huge corporations and politicians walking in it. <laughs> to celebrate equality on paper, pretending that LGBTQIA plus rights will only um, expand. Attacks on LGBTQIA plus rights in Brazil, Hungary, Poland, the US, Turkey show this is not the case. In Belgium, we took the initiative to launch Pride as a protest with Rosa. to go back to the combative roots of pride. And direct the LGBTQI plus movement towards the real enemy, the capitalist system. The anger expressed by young people during these demos was astonishing but ex expected. The capitalist society is organized around the traditional family. With a man who is a breadwinner, yeah. 
and a woman who mainly takes care of the household tasks. So women and LGBTQIA plus people are forced in these binary boxes every day. And capitalism needs it to exert control on these people. It explains the repression women and LGBTQIA plus people face in all their life, especially when they are organizing against it. Starbucks workers in the US who are mainly women and queer people are unionizing. In response, the CEO is threatening to take away trans healthcare coverage. The organized working class is the strongest force for change. Because workers can strike the system where it hurts the most, in the pockets of the bosses. So with Rosa International, we are taking on this struggle. fighting for demands that connect the struggle against sexism and LGBTQIA plus phobia with the struggle of the broader working class. A concrete example is the fight against the long waiting lists for gender affirming care. These are some of the longest in the whole healthcare sector. So we have to call for more investments in healthcare and organize actions to fight for it. These these waiting lists are also putting enormous pressure on people working in healthcare. So we have to go in solidarity with nurses who are already going on strike for more staff and resources. Waiting lists in general are causing stress and uncertainty for the majority of working people. So building solidarity between these people means we are building a movement that can win. To win real bodily autonomy, we need to take it further. What we really need is the healthcare sector being organized by and for the working class. Because only a society that is based on the needs of the working class, a socialist society, can do this.
for profit. Not for profit. Not for profit. And so this last year, we've seen capitalism fall deeper into crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic rages on. Brutal imperialist war rages on, including the new war in Ukraine. The Cold War between Chinese and US imperial, uh, imperialism continues to intensify. <laughs> Cost of living is becoming increasingly unattainable for workers all across the globe. Right-wing attacks on bodily autonomy internationally with the repeal of Roe v. Wade, sparking new fight backs for abortion rights across the globe. And all the while, climate change has driven new records of environmental crisis. As our planet starts to burn and millions of people are displaced, the capitalists are making record profits. And the largest corporations already this year have netted $5 trillion. International socialist alternative have been incredibly active in the fight back against the global crises of capitalism. And our comrades fight to organize in over 30 different countries. In November 2021, Hundreds of our comrades from all continents mobilized to protest the inaction of COP26 conference in Glasgow. And I can't state enough how much of a massive impact um, was made at that protest. The clear messaging around uh, the capitalist forces which drive the climate crisis drew in waves of other protesters to march with the ISA bloc. And I was one of those protesters who was drawn to the march um, with ISA. Um, and through the interventions in Glasgow, uh, a really lively and passionate branch has now emerged in Scotland. <laughs> And there's so much important work being done across our international. We've fought back against 
imperialist war in Ukraine, with particularly brave and important solidarity being shown by comrades in Russia. In Brazil, our members are on the streets fighting uh, the author authoritarian and reactionary Bor Bolsonaro regime. In South Africa, comrades helped to organize the struggle for clover workers against factory closures and layoffs. <laughs> Comrades continue to develop the campaign against repression in China and Hong Kong. And in Seattle, in the US, we defeated yet again the racist right wing recall campaign to remove our comrades, Council Member Shama Sawant. <laughs> But none of this work could be achieved without the hard work and dedication of our comrades. And our work and our sacrifice to build the finances necessary to keep building our organization. Capitalism is a global system, as we know, and we need, we need a global fight back. It's a priority for us to build a strong international organization with central re resources to be able to build and help coordinate our work around the world. So today, we are launching a financial appeal with a target to raise 75,000 euros. And this is part of the ISA's first in-person in international event since before the uh, 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Real power is held in the hands of big business at the moment. From decisions made at board of directors meetings and corporate conferences. Corporate lobbying and donations uh, to the capitalist parties. <laughs> and privately owned mass media, including social media. <laughs> Currently, political and financial power is out of the hands of working class people. And the working class need to recognize and build our own power. So this is why the ISA completely relies on contributions from our members and our supporters. Can you um, make a donation to help us reach our target? 
and improve our work around the world. Already, we've raised over 25,000 euros. Um, so if you're able to make a donation of 5, 10, 50, 200, 1,000 euros or more. <laughs> If you're here in person, you can make a donation by filling out the, the slip and just handing that to Caroline or Robert um, at the doors on your way out. And if you're joining us from Zoom, um, there should be a link in the chat um, to the donation. Thank you, comrades. Wow, what an enthusiasm here. Thank you and thank you, Aiden. <laughs> Aiden explained that we need more financial means to fulfill our historic task. But that's not all. When you're watching this from home, one thing you should know is that we are an active organization with huge ambitions to grow. We need people to join us. And if you didn't do when you're in this room, Don't hesitate to talk someone at the door. But if you're following this meeting from an online platform, please consider then to fill in the link that will be posted in the chat. But we'll keep on convincing you. Another reason on why young and working people need to get organized is to fight the cost of the living crisis. Everyone is talking about the new recession, but the working class is already in crisis. But again, workers fight back. Currently, a strike wave spreads over Europe. As we heard in the US, there is a historic revival of the labor movement. And then the uprisings in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Colombia, unions are at the center. Mike Foster is a veteran trade unionist and socialist from Yorkshire, England. And will explain us how we can get this world we create back in our own hands. That's what the politicians do in America. Hey, <laughs> hi there. How are you doing? Comrades, I don't fit into the age category that the chair announced. <laughs> I'm slightly over 65 now. This year I have entered my 50th year of political activity, 
with Militant Socialist Party and now ISA. Our section is not the biggest section at this rally, but we're the section with the biggest heart. And currently we're rejoicing at the forced departure of our ex-Prime Minister Boris Johnson. It's just over two years ago that he was returned with the biggest majority for his party since the Second World War. He's a racist, he's a sexist, he's anti-gay, and now Boris Johnson has gone away. <laughs> Sounds like a good chant. 48 ministers resigned from his government within a 48-hour very enjoyable period only four weeks ago. Two ministers that he dragged into his cabinet very quickly the following day also called on him to resign. How has he lost his majority so quickly? He failed to get Brexit done. Labour shortages in Britain are one of the worst in Europe. We have also one of the worst cost of living problems because of his failed Brexit strategy. We have the second highest COVID rate of deaths in Europe. He's the first Prime Minister in Britain's history to have a criminal record and was beginning to lose many by-elections for his party. But like everywhere else, we also have a massive inflation problem running at 12% for the lowest paid workers in our country the highest for 40 years. Ours is the worst performing economy in Europe apart from Ukraine and Russia. But comrades, the old sense of disbelief and powerlessness is now giving away amongst the working class to a mood of anger and militancy. There is a new contagion sweeping over our country, as bad as the Omicron variant of COVID, which is called the strike wave. Rail workers were out on strike again tomorrow. Train drivers are out on strike on Saturday. Postal workers will be out in two weeks' time. They will be joined by hundreds of thousands and later millions of workers who are now balloting for strike action. Our working class is very slow to act, but now it's starting to move, then we're on the march.
Keir Starmer's response, the leader of the Labour Party, has been to kick out of his cabinet, shadow cabinet, a Labour minister who joined the picket line today. But our members were down on the picket line this morning. Comrades, our class is rising once again. Socialist, is al socialist alternative in our country is calling to spread the strikes, to escalate the strike action and to coordinate the protests. We are now in an exciting period of intense struggle, the largest strike wave in our country for decades. In our paper, we have a very clear headline. Support the strikes, comrades. Solidarity. We are going to win this battle against this hated Conservative government. Thank you, comrade. It's been really inspiring to hear perspectives from our newest members like Aidan to our more veteran activists like Mike. <laughs> Not old veteran. <laughs> Britain's been in the news because of the brutal heat wave, which has killed a thousand people last week. Climate crisis is at our doorsteps and the ISA has devoted important time and energy to fighting it as part of the global climate movement. We argue for a solution based on working class struggle and socialism. Our next speaker is Mark Troida. He's a, a trade union activist and a leading member of SAV, ISA in Germany. Dear comrades here in the auditorium and all those tuned in online, I need a rhyme. <laughs> I work at a battery electric car manufacturer in the city of Aachen. Four hundred colleagues there develop and produce a small four-seated car for short-distance urban mobility. The drive in the automobile industry to simply replace combustion engines with electric powertrains. Is in their view, the need to keep up profits for the shareholders.
but it is not a step forward to do so. It will cost 400,000 jobs in Germany alone as electric cars need less parts. Why should we, need, should we accept that hundreds of thousands of working people lose their jobs? Carbonless transition needs a much better public transportation system, not just other cars. The workers in the automobile industry can build vehicles for public transport on the streets and on the tracks. Therefore, it needs investments of billions. Let's get that money from the bosses and shareholders. During this week, the ISA is able to bring together hundreds of revolutionary activists from all over the world in the midst of a multiple crisis. And this climate crisis is no longer a problem just for the future. It's happening today. It is the new normal. It's here to stay. Yesterday, the British newspaper, The Guardian, had a long report on what they called Europe's record summer of heat and fires. They wrote, records are being broken for temperatures and burned land. As of July 23rd, just over 515,000 hectares of land have been burned across EU countries. This is four times the average recorded since 2006. Commercial weather data providers found that seven out of 28 European capital cities had temperatures reach 40-year highs for June, July, or both. And one scientist has quoted that 40 degrees Celsius would have been extremely unlikely or virtually impossible without human-caused climate change. But comrades, to be honest, this rapid climate change is not man-made. 
It is caused by the capitalist system and its hunger for rising profits. Of course, capitalism is driven by humans, but they act under the rules of competition, profit greed, and private accumulation of profits. To stop climate change, this system needs to be stopped and overthrown. It is the working class, which is the only force to end the boss's rule. It is the only force to organize a society that is based on, democ in dem on democracy and can meet the needs of the environment and the human beings living on this whole planet. Therefore, the ISA is developing its transitional program to show a way forward. We need to connect the demands of the climate movement with the working class and its organizations. For example, comrades in Germany and other countries have started to do so. Campaigning together with Fridays for Future and the Metal Workers Union, IG Metall, against the close, closure of a Siemens large drive application plant in Nuremberg. And in one of the commissions of this brilliant school this week, just this morning, I have heard similar examples from other countries throughout the world. We are the ones that prepare the best for the struggle ahead. Join the ISA to fight climate change and overthrow capitalism. The sooner the better for a socialist future worth living in. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That was super inspiring. As dedicated as we are fighting this climate crisis, we are struggling against war and imperialism. It's part of the reason why our next speaker cannot show their face for their own safety. As in a lot of authoritarian regimes, it's often the socialists who dictators and tyrants fear the most. But that doesn't stop socialists from organizing against war and imperialism. Socialists in such conditions deserve our endless respect. Socialists. 
Kira is a Russian socialist. With years of experience in fighting for workers, women, and LGBTQI plus rights. against the undemocratic and reactionary Putin regime. Whose imperialist invasion of Ukraine has intensified again the brutality of his regime within the Russian borders. But how will we stop this war? Let's ask, let ask that to this Russian socialist. Yes. Hi, comrades. War in Ukraine is now entering its sixth month. During this time, the Russian army has destroyed Ukrainian cities, committed over 17,000 attacks against civilian targets, and killed over 5,000 civilians. Putin's army, mainly from impoverished regions, begged by mercenary attacks, is committing war crimes, rapes, and looting. <laughs> Establishing occupation governments and repressing all Ukrainians who oppose Russian aggression. Forces, uh, forcing them to renounce the national identity under threat of execution. We, as Marxist and Trotskyist, fully support Ukrainians and the entire Ukrainian working class in the fight against Russian aggression. From the first day of the full-scale war, the Russian section launched our anti-war campaign and organized people on the streets, workplaces, universities, and districts. In the first weeks of spontaneous mass actions, we were involved in organizing anti-war protests around the country. In a couple of weeks, we received about 1,000 contacts who wanted to be involved and supported our anti-war program. Hundreds of people used our posters calling for organized opposition. It seemed that large cities were drowning in the agitation of socialist alternative. This was the rising of the young working class prepared to face the mass repression of the dictatorship. They had to change tactics, withdrawing from street activities until the broader working class is ready to act. During these few weeks of street protests, 
Many of our comrades were arrested. Police officers came to our houses. Our doors were painted with pro-military and fascist inscriptions. Some comrades had, uh, had to urgently leave the country. Our comrade Javid Mamedov was held in prison for several months, uh, formally for his posting against war in social networks. There he was threatened by FSB officers. But the international campaign of ISA helped to free him, and today he is in a safe place. The anti war and labor movement in Russia faces many, many challenges. These are repressions, isolation, and serious economic shocks of sanctions uh, and the global crisis. Putin's regime is curtailing labor rights, destroying, in, destroying independent trade unions, and locking activists in, activists in prisons. But even in such, in such conditions, people continue to act openly or clandestinely. Also, the working class is extremely poorly organized after decades of betrayals of trade unions and workers' organizations. And workers faced with the worsening of labor rights and the economic crisis are beginning to strike and win. We expect an increase it, uh, in outbreaks of struggle across the country with inflation growth and new attacks on the labor rights. We need a massive struggle against imperialism, the regime and poverty organized from below by committees of struggle in workplaces, universities, and districts. To do this, the working class needs broad agitation, organization, and politicization. The center of the Russian and international anti-war movement should be unconditional solidarity with Ukrainian working class. Which today is bravely fighting against Russian aggression with weapons in its hands. We need the agitation of the European, American, Ukrainian, and Russian working class for real solidarity. Uh, 
and joint action in their struggle for independence from imperialist aggression and capitalist exploitation. As workers across the world struggle against their own governments, the Ukrainian working class is the full solidarity of the international working class in its fight against aggression. And against debt, bondage, and imperialist slavery. The Russian working class to need solidarity and support at a time of colossal challenges in its fight against its own regime, the war, and the entire capitalist system. We have a lot of work to do. Thank you. Uh, for our next speaker, I just want to reiterate the points made um, about the previous speaker as a socialist organizing against an authoritarian regime. So we ask that no one takes pictures or recordings while this person is speaking. Ken Lee is from the campaign Solidarity Against Repression in China and Hong Kong. They're from the campaign which fights the world's biggest dictatorship, the imperialist reactionary CCP regime. The new Cold War, which is raging, is the most important process in the world taking place today. It drives events worldwide, from the war in Ukraine to the new economic crisis. ISA is unique in its understanding that workers have no allies on either side of this inter-imperialist conflict. Our answer is the need for revolution in both the East and the West. Preparing for a revolutionary situation in China is a crucial part of this. Comrades, a new historic epoch has opened. Where all struggles between capitalist states are subordinated to the battle for global dominance between the US and China. The inter-imperialist conflict 
threatens to drag the whole world to the edge of Armageddon. Ukraine is merely the start of what is likely many devastating wars. On the economic front, the conflict between these two colossal powers is threatening mass famine and poverty. Again, Sri Lanka is merely the first in a chain of social explosions caused by debt traps created by these imperialist powers. The world working class must take a truly independent stand. against both US and Chinese imperialism. Chinese capitalism is in the most dire crisis has been in uh, for 30 years. More than 260 million people are under forced lockdown. Yesterday, the CCP just put Wuhan under lockdown again. This brutal lockdown is about increasing control and to prepare for a wartime economy and society. Every single person is controlled by the health code. Workers are forced to live at the factory under lockdown. The Chinese property sector is going into collapse. There is a mortgage strike with people refusing to pay housing loans on unfinished homes that they can't move into. We have to make this absolutely clear. This is devastating for Xi Jinping. Who who this year is trying to enshrine his personal dictatorship for life. From spasm to spasm, the second largest economy in the world is entering into long-term decline. This is a further sign of the terminal decay of world capitalism. The financial crisis is also a ticking bomb in China. Four banks in Henan province have collapsed. The regime froze the accounts of over 100,000 people. Making them unable to take back their deposits. This has triggered thousands of people to protest on the streets. Vicious gangsters and undercover police have been unleashed on these protesters. 
It has been entirely censored on social media. But people in mainland China are beginning to say that they understand the mass struggle against police brutality in 2019 Hong Kong. But without the leadership of the working class with a revolutionary program, to push the white heat of revolution into the establishment of a totally new social system, the struggle cannot succeed. This is why the Revolutionary Party is an absolute necessity. International Socialist Alternative is the only Marxist international organizing underground in mainland China. Any opposition to the CCP suffers some very high security risks. Including to our comrades in China. Our comrades were arrested and prosecuted by the dictatorship. But through industrious and serious work, we are preparing for the day that explosive and even revolutionary social movements break out. We can move in on these movements, gain the confidence of the masses, and lead the revolutionary struggle to victory. Thank you, comrades. Again, a big thank you for this motivating speech. But so as the speakers explained, the world finds itself in a constant chain reaction of crisis. And it is no coincidence. Already for a much longer period, it's clear that the priority of this system, it's only about making profits. And it has deadly consequences. But we should be optimistic. Calls to participate in struggle receive an, receive an ever-increasing echo. The, the anger and the search for an alternative is big. But it must be organized. It's how we can translate these struggles into victories. And that's what the example of the US should be used for. And doing this elsewhere is also possible. But we cannot stress it enough, then we need more means.
We are a grassroots organization. So don't hesitate to support us financially by donating. Again, you can find these register uh, you can find these donation forms in the chat of the platform you're following this meeting on. And to thank you for all the participations we had already, we raised over 25,000 euros so far. We have a surprise for you. There are brand new ISA t-shirts. All of you can get one outside at the stall. And yes, apparently also they will be available online very soon. Thanks, comrade. So everyone uh, listening out here today, I just want you to consider what it is that you can do. Inequality, it. poverty, and oppression that we already. But I just want to stress that we need more than just financial contributions. We're building to be a fighting organization of socialist activists rooted within the international working class struggle. We're fighting for the interests of the working class, young people and oppressed people everywhere. If you too are angered by the deep inequalities of the period that we're in, if you've been inspired by our speakers today outlining how we can fight and how we can win, then we urge you to join the ISA and fight against right-wing reactionary forces and capitalist brutality globally. And I just wanna end by saying uh, to those who are here today in person or uh, listening and watching from your screens, Forward to socialist struggle, solidarity, and thank you for listening in on the rally today. COVID-19 threw capitalism into unprecedented crisis. The inequality, poverty, and oppression that we already battled on a daily basis were dramatically exacerbated as the world entered a new era of turmoil. The lives of working class people the world over have been upended, bearing the brunt of the misery unleashed by the pandemic. But the class struggle did not wait, and neither did we. Over the last year and a half, International Socialist Alternative has been active in the movements and struggles of the working class, oppressed, and young people on every continent. We've stood shoulder to shoulder with workers in struggle and play an active role in rebuilding a fighting labor movement. We're waging a socialist feminist fight back against gender violence and sexism in all its forms. We're linked.
linking the struggle for LGBTQ plus liberation to the fight against capitalism. intervened in movements opposing imperialism, war and racism. We fight for Marxist ideas within mass movements. As a threatened ruling class turns to increasingly repressive measures, our members have often been targeted. We've answered with bold solidarity campaigns. Defending Socialist Council member Shama Sawan against big business and the right. Building solidarity against repression in China and Hong Kong. International Socialist Alternative was established at a time when the need for a world party of revolutionary socialism became more apparent than ever. It's not been easy, but the time, energy and sacrifice of all our members has allowed us to take important steps forward, preparing us to seize opportunities in the explosive period ahead.